CataractCoach.com. Capsule rupture of the eye probe. How can you successfully complete this case? An anonymous resident surgeon is operating, so let's learn. So here, by manual IA cortex removal and very carefully trying to remove the lens material and... Oh, what was that? Oh, there's a hole right there. Now, the good move is the infusion's still on. Look, the left hand, the infusion's still going inside there. That is important. So now filling up the eye with viscoelastic. Notice how the foot pedal stayed in position one. And just as we started to inject the viscoelastic, then you could go to position zero and inject more viscoelastic and then pull out. There is zero vitreous prolapse in that picture right now. That's the amazing part. You can sweep here. Use that and sweep and check, is there any vitreous around? And we're sweeping here. I'm showing you the video at two times normal speed now so we can get through it. And there is not. So now the bag's actually clean. There is an opening in the posterior capsule. There's no vitreous prolapse. You can put triamcinolone also to check. But remember, you've got the viscolata there holding everything back first. Let's get the lens in. Three-piece lens. We're going to put the haptics and the sulcus and the optic. We're going to capture that behind the capsule axis. So let's deliver the lens. Remember, it comes out like the first haptic, like a seven, there it is. And then the second haptic, the trailing one, like the capital letter L. Notice how the entire lens is being delivered on top of the iris. That's what I asked the resident to do. Now put more viscoelastic and now we'll dial each haptic gently into the sulcus. There's one haptic and then we rotate it around and the other one. So first the lens was placed on the iris. Now look, beautiful. You can tuck that behind the rexus. That lens is stable. It's not going anywhere. Luckily, it was a nice five millimeter capsule rexus. Now hydrate this incision if you need to. Yeah, make sure that's gonna seal well. We don't wanna have any prolapse here. Don't let the anterior chamber flatten out. And we can go in again and make sure everything is the way we like it. Lens it looks beautifully centered. A little air bubble trap there. That's of no consequence. Let's take the eye probe inside the eye. Again, sweeping around and now injecting some myocol to bring the pupil down. Injecting that myocol directly into the iris body to help really bring the pupil down. There's more myocol, and we can also do a little more sweeping action there. So inject that myocol, bring the pupil down. And of course, at this point, if you had vitreous, you'd see that peach pupil. There is no vitreous. So this is how you finish this case up. And it looks pretty darn good now. Let's hydrate this up, get that eye inflated, and... Make sure that incision is going to seal. And we still got to remove some viscoelastic from the eye, but we just want those incisions to be really nicely sealed ahead of time. We don't want to have any issues or grief here. Now, I know you're going to ask me about the tritium. Don't worry about the tritium. It's not visually significant. Believe it or not, it's not inducing any significant kind of corneal distortion or astigmatism. Here's the eye probe. Careful with that. Get that in the eye carefully. Now, how do you change your settings here? You want to lower the infusion, the infusion pressure. Let's lower the flow that we have in the eye also. We can keep the flow at about half the normal weight, so maybe 30 cc's per minute maximum. The vacuum can stay high. It was just to aspirate out the viscoelastic. So all the incisions look good. So at this point, are you basically done? No, no, no. Come on. 10 nylon. Let's do this. Now, you want the suture here, especially if you're a novice surgeon, because you don't need any extra grief in the post-op period. You don't need this patient to come back tomorrow with a leak at the incision. Remember, if this eye flattens out overnight, what's going to happen? You could get vitreous prolapse. And there's no vitreous prolapse now. So let's just place the suture. This is the path of least grief, especially when you've done less than a few hundred cataracts. So tie this suture up. Yes, we got to be good at suturing as well. Cataract surgeons can't be just suture-less. You have to know how to throw a suture. That looks like a nice pass. Let's get the tension right. You may want to adjust the IOP, make sure the uh, anterior chamber is of normal tension. And then just tie this up. And that looks nice and square. And then one more knot, and that could be buried. We pull the knot back and forth to see the tension. That looks great. And this patient had a beautiful outcome. So yes, there was a break in the posterior capsule during cortex removal and the bimanual IA probe, but luckily we're able to finish the case beautifully. And there it is at the end, nicely sealed incision. I will take it. So put some antibiotics on here, maybe some intracranial moxifloxacin just to be sure. And we'll see this patient in the post-op visit tomorrow. Thanks for watching. 
I know you love the YouTube videos, but check out the website, cataractcoach.com. A lot easier to navigate. We have a complete list of articles and videos. You can go and check on any of these categories and explore more. You can also search. There's a search engine that's really effective. You can see Gore-Tex lenses like this. And finally, you can look up about me. There's a link that has my surgical instruments. Now you don't even have to ask me. You can just find out for yourself what's the name of those forceps.